So my name is Jordan Hopes and my presentation today will be on the effects of varying amounts of creatine supplementation on performance in squat and bench press one rep max for recreational male weightlifters, FTSC Sport Health, Health and Exercise at City College Norwich. Okay, so creatine is a nitrogenous acid that occurs naturally in the body and is created predominantly in the liver. Creatine is also an osmotically active substance which pulls water into your muscle cells which increases protein synthesis and in weightlifting all that you really want is increased protein synthesis because the, more, uh, the faster you can synthesize protein the quicker you can recover and the more hypertrophy, if that's what you're going for, you will achieve. Water retention is a common side effect of creatine and about 2-4 to four pounds of water in the first week of supplementation is water weight as such. The rest, if you have any increase, will be to your muscle cells. The supplemented version of creatine, which comes in many different flavoured forms, not only powder but also pill, is known as creatine monohydrate. It's the most researched, tested and used bodybuilding supplement on the market. Body, uh, the body itself produces around one gram of amino acids and the average person's diet you will get around one gram of, uh, from your food. Now the body, interestingly, excretes any form of creatine when it has over five grams. Now this links directly into my hypothesis, which is that, as you can see here, um, the guideline daily amount is five grams per day in supplementation forms. Now I've just said that you produce and get two grams from regular diet and yourself and you excrete anything over five grams so really all you need is three grams per day and not five so is this the company that create the, uh, the product just trying to get you to consume more than you actually need so that you buy more that's the aim, that's the hypothesis uh, behind this this research. So, to the methods. We chose 30 recreationally resistance trained males of at least two years. This was mainly so that they had a basic knowledge of what they're doing in the gym and it would mean that yes we would do familiarization testing but it's mainly just to make sure that their technique is good and that there isn't any unfair advantages to different people uh, through poor technique and it won't lead to any injuries during our research uh, take, uh, undertaken. So, uh, we did have specific uh, age, body mass and height. They were 22, uh, but plus in three years. Body mass of 80 kilos, plus or minus 10, and a height of 182, plus or 5 centimetres. Now, to uh, put that in layman's terms, I would essentially be the average candidate for this um, research. Informed consent was signed, ethical clearance was given, and they were split into three groups of ten. Daily amount of creatine given was uh, the daily recommended guideline of five grams, two and a half grams, and zero grams, just to see what the differences would be. Now we tested them in both squat and bench press one rep max, much like Suze et al in 2011. Squat and bench press is almost like a foundation of exercises that a lot of bodybuilders use to increase uh, strength and hypertrophy in both the chest and the legs respectively for bench press and squat. So we thought that this would be the perfect two exercises to use in this research. Four training sessions a week, two upper body, two lower body, were tailored specifically for all of our um, participants. However, they were all the same to make sure that we kept it as fair as possible. The reason that we did two upper and two lower was because of the, uh, the effects of DOMS. We wanted everything to be evened out because obviously bench press is requiring a lot from the upper body and squats is requiring a lot from the lower body. The one rep max was taken weekly for four weeks. 
However, the first one rep max that we took was used as a foundation to see where they were at. And the last one rep max that was taken was to compare our results. The two in between, so the one on week two and week three, was to just to see um, that they were progressing. If they weren't progressing, maybe the exercises and weights that we'd given them for the four training sessions a week had to be increased or reduced. And it was also just to make sure that they remained using the correct technique throughout the training protocols so that we didn't have, in week four, testing them and they were using the wrong technique. The results here, the bench press. As you can see, there are considerable changes. We were expecting that because there was a lot of research to back up that creatine does work. Not for everyone, there is research that shows that throughout the general population of users, it's normally around a 70-30 split. 70% of people get on well with creatine and respond well to creatine, and 30% don't. However, as we can see, there is clear increases in both squat and bench press respectively. So, on the far left we have zero, two and a half, and five. There is quite a difference between zero and two and, two and a half, however, not much of a difference between two and a half and five, which backs up the hypothesis that your body does not need five grams because it's already excreting the two in excess, because you already get, sorry, you already get two from your food and your amino acids, so your daily intake would then be seven, so you're excreting that two grams. You take two and a half grams, plus the two that you get, you're actually looking at a half a gram difference as opposed to two and a half, which you can see is backed up here in the results, because there is a smaller difference between two and a half and five and zero and two and a half. So this all backs up the hypothesis, and as you can see here, with any uh, tests undertaken, there are standard deviations on the board. But just to be clear, the blue is before and the red is after. On to my personal development. Over the last two years, I haven't really used many journals. Um, so it's one thing to start using journals and start finding journals, but then I also had to start comparing journals. So I almost, I didn't really, over the last two years, I haven't done myself any favours because now I've come to this stage and I've almost had to jump in at the deep end and learn to compare journals. However, I do find in this module it has been a little bit easier because I'm genuinely interested in the effects of creatine, having been on it myself previously, had a number of months break and now I'm back on it again. Um, so it's almost like this is actually for, for me, not only for this course, but for my own body and my own, my own progression. So yeah, so comparing journals has been difficult, but I do find that I'm a little bit more confident now. Critical thinking and analysis um, is something that has improved, I feel, um, in this, but still has a long way to go. Um, but I just feel like I can see things from different perspectives and can find more relevant uh, information to use um, in my assignments now and hopefully from this it will then move forward and should hopefully reflect in my grades. Time management is something over the last two years that has been pretty poor and uh, something that is slowly getting better but still needs to be improved but I'm still I'm using techniques like I, I bought myself a calendar and things like that just to, just to try and plan out all the dates that things had to be handed in. Efficient referencing is the biggest increase, uh, improvement, sorry, of any of these personal developments because I'm ashamed to say that before this assignment I thought you had to use a direct quote in order to reference something. However, as you can see here, I've learned that actually you just use a reference to back up what you're saying. You don't actually have to find a specific quote, which is going to help me a lot going into the third year. Very much. Well done.
So, a few questions for you. Um, what type of research design have you used to complete this proposal? Uh, I've used a, a quantitative comparative design because of the numerical data involved, uh, comparing obviously before and after, and the grams involved. Okay, good, thank you. And your sampling method, how did you go about recruiting these resistance trained individuals? Uh, going into to gyms and using uh, their, their age, weight and, and height okay. to find uh, similar kind of people as such. And because it's quite popular for this age range certainly, it wasn't that difficult to find the amount of people needed. Okay, thank you. Um, Statistics. Talk me through what statistics you would or could use to compare that data that you've got. So specifically inferential statistics, not means, not standard deviations. That'd be using an ANOVA. That kind of thing, yeah. Post hoc. So would you use an ANOVA, would you use post hoc? An ANOVA. Okay. Do you know why? That's right. Um, so, can you just give me some details about the exercise program? So, you said yes. there were four training sessions a week, two upper, two lower. Yep. Give me some details. What kind of, um, what were they doing within those training sessions, or what were they okay. doing? Okay. So, essentially, um, it was, it began trial and error to find where everyone was at. But pretty much, you start off. So, for the upper body, over the two sessions, you split uh, shoulder, chest, back. Tricep and bicep exercises, aiming for a range between 60 and 80 percent of the one rep max, um, and they would be hour sessions. So they'd have two hours um, a week on upper, two hours a week on lower, and then with with uh, the lower body, you'd have an hour on uh, quadriceps, an hour on hamstrings, and mixing the calves with both sessions. So are you looking even balance? Compound complex exercises. Free weights, body weight, what kind of? Well, apart with the exception of body weight, uh, compound complex and free weight. Thank you. Um, did you find that your results were in line with what other researchers had found? So your expected results? Yes, in the sense that there is a lot of evidence to back up the effects of creatine and the percentage of increase. So did your work meet your hypothesis? Yes, yes it did, as you can see, because of the smaller degree of change, because actually when you take in consideration what you eat and your amino acids, it's actually only a difference of half a gram as opposed to two and a half, Thank because you. the rest of it was treated. Cool. And two more questions. Um, would you make any improvements to your study? So if you were to do this again, is there any way you could make it better? Yes, yes. Um, I struggled finding references um, for this particular, the effects of, uh, of, of creatine in the, and, the, and the percentage used. Mm -hmm. I, I found lots of references for journals on creatine itself, mm -hmm. but didn't have the skills yet to be very specific to find percentage differences, if that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. Final question, what's, out of your personal development points, what's yep. your main focus for moving forward? I think they're all, they're all important, um, but the, the one I'm most pleased with is efficient referencing, because I now feel that, say for example, 15 to 20 references before would have been like, how on earth am I going to do that? However, now that I know how to reference properly, even though it took me two years to find out, I feel like actually that's not that difficult because you can use more than one to back up one point in a very short uh, word count. So it's utilising this Absolutely, new found yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Well done.